Who still got it on me? Nope, should be on. Nope, we're good to go. Okay. We can move this to the side. Too. No, do you got everybody else on mute? Uh, they on mute, but they can unmute themselves. Good evening, everybody. Um, so normally I would do like a full presentation, but being that it's a small group of us today, we can actually go through some things if you have any direct questions. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Yvonne Dinkins. I am Jarrell's wife. Um, I am also a business credit coach and I also do furnishing um for Airbnbs. I do a host of different things but tonight we just wanted to focus on business credit and if you guys had any direct questions so um you guys are unable you guys are able to um unmute yourself so if you had any questions that you had to ask in regards to how to build business credit or what things should be done you guys can ask that how do i move this over Hey, I'm trying to get my computer ready. What? Sorry, Yvonne. No problem. Take your time. Hello, hello. How you doing? I'm great. Um, first, congratulations on that beautiful baby. Thank you. <laughs> I have, I have a question. Um, yes. As far as business credit, I know it's, it's totally different from, you know, personal credit or, or whatever. Yes. So once someone pretty much mess up their business credit or they actually have it where they had like a late payment, mm -hmm. how difficult is that for them to actually get their scores up at that point? Because I actually have a client that I'm actually working with. Um, I'm actually new to it. Yeah. Um, helping people with their business credit um but she came well actually I was helping her set up her, her right. business or whatever and what happened was she wind up paying a bill late and she didn't realize it so it okay. actually dropped her score like really really low so at that point would you actually suggest that they just continue maybe doing like more net 30s to maybe boost their score up yeah so what I or would, would recommend what I would recommend for you to do is you all with Okay, so with personal credit, you know what, with our personal credit, we can easily pay somebody to go and wipe some things off, whether it's late payments or um, late payments or missed payments, they can actually wipe that off. But when it comes to business credit, it's not that easy to get it off to have somebody actually remove it. So how do you um, get that off your credit report? You actually want to build over it. So we always tell people to, at minimum, you should always have about five... Um, business credit um, accounts report and whether that's net 30s, that's credit cards, it depends on where you're actually at in the process of building your business credit because it does, um, business credit does require different tiers. So normally yeah. everybody knows the net 30s, the net 15s, the net 60s, but then you have your next tiers where you can actually get um, like cars in your business name you can get credit cards in your business name you can set autopilot accounts up um autopilot is one of the, the number one methods that i personally love when it comes to building business credit is because you don't have to go in and just order a whole bunch of supplies like the net 30 accounts require you to do which is product based um with the okay. autopilot is more so of like auto pay you sign up for an account you pitch a debit card or credit card on file they charge you each month for that particular account and you don't have to do anything. So you avoid missing payments. Right. So I'll show you because you are helping somebody. Um, give me, how do I move this? I don't know why I feel like I'm moving all around with my <laughs> iPads. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so I'll do a brief, um, overall like a summary about business credit for you guys that are maybe familiar or about to start building your business credit that way you guys know who the business um credit bureaus are you have Experian business you have Dun and Bradstreet and you also have Equifax these are the top three just like how we have with our personal credit these are the ones that when companies wants 
um, companies want to do business with you, they will actually pull your report from these three, um, these top three business credit bureaus. Um, so when you get into business credit, you always have the startup accounts, which is your net 14, your net 30, your net 55. Let me see if I can move this over. One second, guys. So you can take screenshots just in case if you need them. Um, these are your net term accounts, which are normally product based. These are companies like Quill. You have um, Quill. You have. Uline, you have um, what is it? Um, what's the other? Granger. Granger, yeah. Granger is a company that I don't recommend anybody to use because yeah. you're not gonna really use the products there anyway. You're just wasting money. And with my method of doing business credit is I'm trying to we're trying to substitute um our current spending to incorporate it into our business expense. We don't want to take on the extra bill each month because when you have at least a minimum of five business credit accounts. You're looking from anywhere from maybe $200 to $250 a month that you have to maintain to actually build your business credit score. So how I do that with my clients is the net 30 accounts that companies like Quill offer, I, um, companies like Quill offer, I normally tell my clients, if you don't have a business like an office or anything that you actually need these products for, use them for your home. So I will order like, Paper towel, tissue, cleaning supplies. Um, with Quill, they do require a minimum of fifty dollars. Normally, I run to Target and buy these products anyway, so I just substitute it with my business spending. So I will purchase from a company like Quill just to actually build my business credit. Um, you guys can take screenshots of this. That way, when you are actually able to start building your business credit or um, you're looking to maybe like help someone, you know, what requirements are actually um, required for these companies to do business with you. Quill is a company, again, this is a product-based company. They have different things like office supplies, um, cleaning supplies. They have printers, everything you need, basically, um, Quill has. With them, you do have to, they do require a minimum of $100 for the first purchase to establish an account with them. And then each month after that, they do require $50 minimum to maintain the account. And they also report to Dun & Bradstreet. You have companies like Creative Analytics. With them, they do require a one-time fee of $79 um, to start a net 30 account with them. But then they do require you to spend a minimum of $100 the first time, but they do subtract the $79 from the hundred. Yeah. So you pretty much have to just spend $21 to actually maintain the account. You have other companies like Crown Office Supplies. These particular companies that I am showing you are not the autopilot uh, method way of building business credit. These are more product-based, but these are showing you what our net 30 term account. If any of you guys have any questions while I'm going through the slides, you can actually um, ask the questions while we're going. Somebody wrote something in the chat. Okay, we got it here. Give me one second to... Now with Amazon, Amazon, we know pretty much if you go to amazon.com, they have everything under the sun that you can actually purchase with them. Amazon does have different accounts. They have a net 55 account. They have net 30 and they also have a net 60 account. Um, what Amazon has been doing is they're trying to get a lot of business owners to work with them. So what you can do is you can actually go and set up an Amazon business account and once you create the business account you can actually call the billing department for um the amazon business line of credit and you can actually tell them hey um i have this company by so and so they may ask you for your dun and bradstreet number to actually make sure that the company exists you can tell them that you want to start a um net 30 term account sometimes you will get a representative that may send you the link some of the other representatives may tell you that you need to make purchases first, which is maybe one or two purchases, and then they can actually extend your business line of credit. You have Home Depot. That's another company that offers um, net 
um, net 30 accounts and net 60 accounts. These are everything that Home Depot requires for you to have an account with them. The good thing I like about um, Home Depot is that they have net term accounts and then they also have credit cards, which allows you to, um, you know, build your business credit, whether you're in a tier one or a tier three account, depending on where you are with building your business credit. Normally, people can reach a tier three account within maybe six months of building business credit. Um. I, I want to ask you something. I'm, it, it's directly related to that, but for me to clarify something. So yes, I had a, I, I'm closing a business that I had for so many years and only now at the closing of the business that I hear business credit and personal credit as two yes. separate things. My accountant through all these years never told me about any of these hacks, about anything about building uh, business credit. He only spoke about saving money and paying mm -hmm. bills and helped me growing, obviously. Yeah. But he never spoke about these details. Does that mean that he doesn't know this, this little the hacks? Because how is that I have a business for... Don't take me wrong. I <laughs> did not have experience when I started a business whatsoever. Zero. Yes. I was a beauty teacher and an esthetician that wanted to buy build a spy small. So I went little by little, I grew little by little, one step at a time. But when it comes to taxes and all that, imagine I didn't even pay taxes in my first year. That's how much I knew about it. Yeah. So as time goes on, now I'm about to close. It's going into bankruptcy because it didn't work out anymore the past year. But uh now that I'm I'm investing in other like mentorship with you guys and stuff, I'm hearing a lot about business credit. And personal credit, where where did I miss myself in there? <laughs> so a lot of people, this is where a lot of business owners go, um, especially where people with like accountants and stuff, because they're normally teaching you to put everything under your personal name, um, which isn't a problem. But when you're doing business, you always want to keep everything separate. So a lot of people that get into building, um, that get into businesses and stuff, they go out and they take out personal loans under their, you know, their personal name. Everything that I have yeah. is my name under is your a personal grantor name. or, mm -hmm. or my social security is there for today because I'm going through this, my credit had dropped like by like 200 hit. points in one day and all this, these things happening. I, I don't even know where it's coming from, but everything is directly related to my name. That's why I'm confused. How is it business credit so I can build it separate from my personal credit? Yeah. So when you have a business credit, um, so basically when you're building business credit, um, once you have your business established with the secretary of state, your EIN, your business address, everything that matches, normally mm -hmm. if you see this thing called the Dunn's number, if you go to Dunn and Bradstreet, um, it's a nine digit number that they give you, which is considered your business social security number. So that number is normally what's used for the credit bureaus when they actually pull in your business credit report. Never even heard of that before. Yeah, it's called Dun it's called the Dunn's number. So normally what they do is whenever you're opening up accounts under your business name, they're gonna ask you, Hey, do you have your um article of organization, which is your paperwork from the Secretary of State? Yeah. Hey, do you have your EIN number? And then you right. do you have your business address? What I do tell most business owners, whether you're working from the comfort of your home or wherever you're working from, never have your business registered to your home address. You can always, you know, get a virtual business address, which is like companies like iPostal one. Um, there's a, a ton of different places that you can get a business address from, but we always tell you don't register it to your home address. Once you have all of these things, may maybe depending on what type of business you have, you may need a business license in some states, depending on the that nature of case. your business. Yeah. The nature yeah. of your business. But then once you go, once you go to Dun and Bradstreet and actually apply for a Dunn's number, you will notice that if you go to like companies like Lowe's or you go to companies like Amazon, when you're opening up accounts with them, they're not asking you for your personal social security number. They're asking you, Hey, what is your Dunn's number? So that's how you start to build business credit. So normally the, the um, steps to building business credit is once you have your entire company established, you get your DUNS number and then you start to open up these accounts that you hear like net 30s, net 60s. These are accounts that if you have a net 30 term account, a company will extend your company a business line of credit, but you have within 30 days to pay the entire balance back. So let's say if you go to Amazon, they give you a net 30 account, but you spend a thousand dollars 
on June first, by July first, you have to pay the whole thousand dollars back. Okay. So you do want to have everything separate. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can speak to your accountant about that. The company is called Dun and Bradstreet. If you go on, I'm gonna have to find a new accountant because <laughs> I'm not gonna follow with the same one. Yeah. I mean, for ten See, years he has been my accountant. I'm excellent, but for mm -hmm. these details, I want someone a little more. Yeah. Because that was something that he it's should have explained to you because that's how most companies build it. And that's where a lot of business owners go wrong is that they listen to people and they put everything into their personal credit. And then when your, your business starts to take a hit, your personal credit takes a hit. So now you, you're losing points over the time because now you have loans that maybe are not being paid back. You have credit over cards. Over the time, mm -hmm. from yesterday to today, I, I got an alert and I checked my credit that I was working so hard on. 200 points gone. Oh, wow. In a day? From yesterday to today. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, your accountant definitely should have, if he's dealing with your business, that's something that he should have told you. That way, eventually you can, once you build your business credit um, profile up to what it needs to be, you don't have to personal guarantor. Most of these accounts, they will ask you sometimes for like your personal information just to verify that you're the actual owner. When they ask you for the social, some people get afraid like, oh, I don't want to put my social, but they're not asking it to put it on your personal credit report. They're just making sure that you're the actual owner because when they pull up everything on the Secretary of State, that stuff is public record. Okay, so if I have an account that is already existing, for example, the mm -hmm. business is set up, I have a, a, another business that it's going to just not be operating anymore. But I don't, I have everything. I have the, the EIN, da, da, da. I just don't have this DUNS number. And I've yeah. been operating that business for about three, four years now. Okay. Can I still get it? Yeah, you can go on Dun & Bradstreet. It's called DN, the letter N, DNB dot com when you go on it you can actually apply for it it's going to ask you for two proof you're going to put all of the information that it asks for on the application then once you get to the bottom it's going to ask you to submit two um two proofs of ownership which is you can put the secretary of state and a copy of your ein just to show that you're the actual owner of the business once uh -huh. you put that information in um it does take some time anywhere from 14 to 30 days for them to give you a duns number once they approved you for a DUNS number, they will actually send that to you via email. And from that moment and on, that's going to be my social security. That's the number Correct. I'm going to give my credit on. Okay. Yeah. So when you're applying for stuff, they're going to ask you for that information. Okay. Um, This is another company, um, BP, the gas car. I normally recommend this to a lot of owners that have car, um, business owners that have cars because Again, as I said, we're replacing our current spending just to build business credit. So if you have to already get gas, you know, to do your personal um errands, you can actually use this car. It's a business expense car, but you can actually use it for personal use and then just pay it back the way that they tell you. Um, with Dun I mean, with BP Business Solutions, the thing that I love most about them is that they actually have a MasterCard logo. So what this means is if you need um oil. If you need fuel and maintenance, maybe you might need a um like an oil change, you might need gas, you may need a car wash. You can actually use this car anywhere that requires for any like car improvement or car maintenance. So when you do your business credit um rep, your business credit report and you go to pull your credit report, this is something that you will see here. With Dun and Bradstreet, the highest score to get is a hundred. Anything 80 and above is considered a, a perfect business credit score. With Experian, is the same thing. Anything 80 and above, all the way up until 100, is considered a good credit score. And then with Equifax, they're looking to see how likely is this company to go into delinquency. So you always want to have a high um, credit report when it comes to them. When they see your numbers in like maybe 100, 200, they know that based off your personal credit report and based off of how you do transactions on the business credit report, you're, you're more than likely to go into delinquency, whether you have late payments, whether you have missed payments, maybe um, you didn't pay on time, like different things. They base that off, um, excuse me, Equifax based that off of what they see and they actually put that on your report. So the young lady that asked about um, what happens when somebody doesn't pay, 
this will be something that they notice on a business credit report. The numbers will actually go down. So you'll probably see it at about one or 200 when you actually want to get it up to 580. That way they don't have any um regrets with doing business with you. Okay. Yvonne, so can, I, I, can I just, I'm ahead. sorry, can I just add something when you was mentioning something about the DUNS number? Yes. Um, I'm just going to add, I just want to add this because it's actually happened to me. Um, for one, I was in business too for like almost 10 years and I didn't know about business credit either until I got a mentor. So kudos to you, um, Camilla. But when you go to Duns and Bradstreet, um, one of my businesses, um, actually when I went there, I had a Duns number and I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. So I know they said sometimes like if you, if you already opened up a business, um, bank account, depending on the bank, it's a possibility you might have one. So when you go on that site that, um, Yvonne stated just kind of put your business name in here as well I mean it's a possibility you might already have one I only added that because that happened to me when I was applying and I had already had a number and I didn't know it and you said your bank actually applied for you yes I got it through opening up the bank my bank account that it actually went through um and it did it for me oh that's good so yeah, you can yeah. search it when you go to Dun & Bradstreet. They do allow you to search companies um, depending on what your company name is. If you have a business bank account, as she said, her bank did it for her. So you can actually search it and see if maybe you have one. Um, If your company does come up in a database, you can actually request to have the number emailed to you as well. So you can, um, anybody that does have their company established already but didn't apply for a Dun & Bradstreet number, you can actually just check it tonight. And if you haven't done so already, I will actually go to dmb.com and start to apply for one if you already have all of your other paperwork um, intact. Now, when it comes to autopilot accounts, this is where we start off here. So most people, um, just like with our personal credit, we go to companies like Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, Identity IQ, different places to actually check our, our report. Um, Credit Karma and Credit Sesame is free. Other companies, they do charge you. So the thing that I love about NAV is that this is an autopilot account. I can actually pay NAV a one-time, well, it's not a one-time fee. It's a monthly fee of $39.99. And they will actually give me my personal credit report and as well as my business credit report. So on the slide that I previously showed you, which is this, when you go to nav.com, this is actually the slide that you will see here that shows on your left-hand side, it would say business credit report. And then on the right-hand side, it would say personal. Um, with them, this is an account that you put your credit card on file. They take the money out each month, the $39.99, and they actually report those particular payments to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and also Equifax business. So they report to all three um credit bureaus across the board and they actually report it as a trade line. So every month you're making these payments, it's giving you your personal credit report, your business credit report, and you're actually building business um, credit because of this particular account. So Credit Strong is another company that has um, an autopilot account, which allows you to build business credit and actually save money. So with this particular account, it's an um, installment loan. So let's say you're the business owner that you're like, okay, I know I get carried away sometimes with spending money, but I actually want to save money while I'm actually building my business. So you can actually sign up for one of their accounts. They have different accounts, one which is $115 a month and also one that's $199 um, a month. This account is 120 months. And then this um, for the 199 is 60 months of payments. So what you're actually doing is each time that you make these payments is actually building into a pretty much going into a piggy bank, which we are say, um, and it's actually saving you up to 10, saving you $10,000 in an installment loan. Um, they don't require any personal information. They just actually require your business information, which is like your EIN number. Once you make these payments each month, um, you're actually building towards that $10,000 savings goal. So most, um, I do have a lot of business owners that they aren't, you know, that good with saving money, but they know like if I have my credit card on file and they're automatically taking the payments, I will have the money saved regardless without me having to actually do it. So once they take those payments out, these this credit report, um, Credit Strong is actually reporting to 
Equifax, um, they are supposed to be reporting to Dun & Bradstreet and also Experian. They said it was supposed to be by summer of 2023. So I think as of June, they actually started to report to Dun & Bradstreet. But that's something I have to double check. But for sure, the only account um, credit bureau that they're reporting to right now is Equifax. So this is another company that's an autopilot account. This company is called eCredible. So with eCredible, um, before they only uh, used to allow business owners to report utility bill payments that's under your business name. But what they recently started to do is anything that is attached to the business owner, whether it's your house light bill, your cable bill, your gas bill, any bills that you have, whether it's a telephone, um, your electricity bill, any bill that you have that's attached to you, they uh, actually allow you to report those payments and it actually gets reported to Dun & Bradstreet Experian Business and also Equifax Business. They do require a one-time fee of $49.95 to set up the account. And then each month after that, they will charge you $10 to report those accounts to the credit bureaus. What I do tell business owners is if you're not good at making your payments on time, do not report your utility payments. So if you know that your light bill or your gas bill goes in late, do not report report it to the business credit bureaus because then what happens is every time that payment is reported late it's actually going to show on your business credit report but let's say if you're the business owner that pays everything on time or maybe you have like your light bill or your gas bill already set up on autopilot and they automatically take those payments you can actually connect it to this company called eCredible and have them report those payments to the business credit bureaus as well they do allow you to link up to eight accounts so you can actually link all of these accounts above, or let's say if you live in like a building, um, you know, like whether you have an Airbnb building or you live in like a newer building, um, like they will allow you to report your rent payment. So even with the virtual business address, the I postal one, um, you are going to pay for your virtual business address, which sometimes it can be $14.99 a month or maybe $10. You can actually report those payments as well to um, eCredible, and they will actually report those to the business credit bureaus. This is a company called Red Spectrum. The thing I like about Red Spectrum is they do provide credit reference letters for business owners. So let's say if you started an Airbnb, you wanted to get an Airbnb, and the Airbnb said, hey, well, we will need a credit reference letter from somebody that you've done business with. This company does allow business owners to call them and say, hey, we need a credit reference letter. So with Red Spectrum, they do report this payment as a trade line. They do offer a net 30 term account. You will have to pay um, a one-time fee of $99 a month. And then they charge um, $54.95 a month. But with them, they have different account, different tier. Hold on. They have different tier accounts. So with Bright Spectrum, they do allow you to speak to different um, uh, business credit managers that actually allow you and they help you with the process of building business credit each month. So every month that you make those payments, you can actually have your own pretty much like an accountant, um, but it's somebody virtual that you actually speak with. This is another company called Biz Credit Central. So with Biz Credit Central, um, they do report it as a trade line, but they report a certain amount. So let's say if you're a business owner and you're just starting and you want to eventually get approved for credit cards, that's not maybe $500 or $1,000. The way that you do that is that you need to have accounts reporting with high credit limits. So what credit, um, Biz Credit Central is, they will allow you to set up an account with them, which is this particular account, which is the essential plan. Um, it's $11.95 each month, and then they report a $2,500 um, $2, um, credit line to the business credit bureaus. Do you get access to the money? No, you don't get access to the money, but they do allow that particular amount to be reported to the business credit bureaus for only $11.95 each month. This does help business owners get approved for higher limit um, accounts a little bit quicker than actually building from the ground up, which is the net 30s, and then having to go through different channel accounts. So let's say if you're like, hey, I want to get a credit card within the next six months, and I want the limits to be maybe $5,000, this would be an account that I would tell you to invest in because once they report the $2,500 limit, 
Now, when you go to apply for other accounts, they're going to try to start you in a higher tier instead of going backwards. Uh, when you link the accounts, it will go under your personal name um, for the e-credible. It will go under... These payments are being reported to the business credit bureaus, but they do allow you to pull them up under your personal name. So when you go on to um, eCredible, you're going to sign up for the business. It's called biz, biz, um, business.ecredible.com. When you sign up for the account, um, it is going to ask you for all of your business information. So let's say once you pay all of your business information, you set up the account, you pay the $49 a month. Now it's going to go to the um, Dropbox that asks you what particular account do you want to link? You let's say you click um cable, you click on the cable bill, it's gonna redirect you to the cable website. Let's say if you have Optimum, which is a company that they have between Connecticut and New York. Um, if you have the um optimum login information, it's gonna let you log into your personal account. It's gonna ask you, do you give this particular company e-credible permission to report your payments as your business credit to the business credit bureaus? Once you click yes. These payments are now going to be converted over into your um to the business credit um reporting agency. It does not mess up your personal credit. It's not going to have anything where you have to call the personal credit bureaus and tell them anything. They're just going to report the history to the um business credit bureaus. So you don't need to do anything on the personal side. Once you give them permission to report it to eCredible, that's all you have to do. So Yvonne, quick question. Yes. Um, by the way, thank you for this. This is amazing. I feel like Camila, like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> thank um, you. So okay, the, since it's, it's a lot of it's a lot, but I I want to get my ducks on the road on we have the business, we have LLC, we have EIN, we have our dunce number, everything is set up. Yes. Now we were the next step that I want to work on is actually building that credit. What would you recommend? Or I know you mentioned you like the biz credit central, um, but which one would you recommend to kind of start some kind of building so we can apply eventually for some kind of credit card um, for, for our business? So when you're starting to build, like I said, you need a minimum of five accounts. One account is not going to make a huge dent into your business credit um, profile because, again, there is just going to be one account reporting. Um, I do recommend a mixture of things. Like I said, since you want to substitute your payments, let's say if you know that monthly you do, you know, your little store runs, whether it's a Target or just going to the regular stores and you're buying paper towels or school supplies or different things for the kids or whatever it may be, um, I would do a mixture, of a, a mixture of accounts. I would do Quill, which is the company, the first company that I told you guys about, which is this one. This is a product basic um, company. So you can go on there and look for different things to purchase each month. Um, this would substitute what you're already doing. So if you're already buying paper towels and tissues, you use this. That way you're not adding on the extra bill. Um, let's say if you need, let's see, what's another account, Amazon, let's say if you have all of your paperwork and stuff done, you may buy stuff under your personal name all the time off of Amazon, set up the net 30 account with them that do Amazon. They're not going to watch and say, Oh, she's ordering, let's say, um, a hairdryer. That's not for her business. They're not going to do that. So once they approve you for the account, you can actually just go on Amazon and order whatever you want. So if you know, like, if you know that you always order stuff for your personal use, this would be a second account that I would actually do because now you're substituting what you're already spending for this particular account. Um, if you're a person that goes to Home Depot a lot, me, I do a, a, ton of different projects, whether it's home projects or helping people set up Airbnbs or doing different things. We have a um, Home Depot account and also a Lowe's account. So this is something that I personally use because when I'm going to get paint for my clients or picking up different things from my home, I actually use this account too. So if you're a person that do home repairs, either Home Depot or Lowe's would be another um, account that I do. BP, if you have a, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you have a car, 
this would be another account that I may substitute because if I'm going to buy gas anyway, why not buy gas under my business card and actually pay it back the same way I would do it with my personal. So let me ask real quick, Yvonne, with the BP, it doesn't have to only be BP gas station to put gas? No. So I live in Connecticut um, while well, I live in Stanford and we don't have any BPs right here in the area that I live in. So I do sometimes go to Shell or Mobile. Um, you can actually use the cards here too. Being that it has this MasterCard logo, you can use it anywhere that um takes MasterCard. Okay, thank you. <laughs> can I ask you a quick question about yes. the um Lowe's and the Home Depot card? Yes. Um, with that, is it a business Lowe's or a business Home Depot card you're applying for? Yes. The One it's second. not in our personal name. <laughs> No, it's under your business um name. So when you go to Lowe's, it's called the Four Pros. Um, what is it called? Lowe's Four Pros is a business account. When you apply for okay. them, <laughs> excuse me. When you apply for them, it's a credit card that they actually give you. Um, one is a credit card. They have like a revolving account, and then they also have the one that you just get the number. And when you go there, they actually just pull up your business information. Like, oh, do you have the account number they pull it up and they actually do it for you um Lowe's is good and also Home Depot Lowe's is a little bit easier to get than Home Depot because Home Depot just wants you to verify everything um but Lowe's okay. if you have a Lowe's by you that that would be an account to get as well um especially for people that are doing Airbnb or you know you got somebody that and does a lot of home improvement like projects and is there any way if I already have a Lowe's card where I can convert it from my personal account into like a business account? Um, You can't. If you have an account with them, it may be a little bit easier for you to get a business account for them. They may allow you to keep both because um the four pros is strictly commercial and then they have like, you know, the regular Lowe's um, personal account. So they may not convert okay. it over, but they may actually just, it may be a little bit easier for you to get. All right, good to know. I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna go do that this weekend. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, so BP will be another one. So you have Quill, you have BP, which is um, if I'm doing it and I'm a person that I'm like, hey, I want to build business credit, but I don't want to take on an extra bill each month. I'm gonna use accounts that I can substitute. So me personally, I will use Quill. I will use BP because I have to always get gas for my car. Um, Lowe's because I'm always doing projects and that's the nature of my business. Um, I will also use NAV because I already pay for credit monitors, credit monitoring service. I used to use, um, identity IQ. I now use NAV because anytime something goes on my report, it automatically alerts my phone and tell me, Hey, something just popped up on your NAV account. Um, this one, again, this gives you your personal and business credit report. So I'm not having to pay two separate um, credit creditor monitoring, uh, monitoring services. I can actually just pay one and get all, um, get both credit reports there. So that's already four. You have Quill, BP, um, Lowe's, NAV. And then if I'm another person and I'm trying to save money and I don't want to overspend you can actually either choose between the two which is e-credible because then you only pay 9.95 a month and you can actually report your utility payments or you can actually do the biz um credit central where i'm gonna pay 11.95 each month and they're going to report a 2500 dollars trade line to my account so that's five accounts that you can do right there that will basically cost you under 200 dollars a month to actually build your business credit and your your substituting your current spending already, so you're not taking on any extra bills. Got it. That's good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did anybody else have any questions in regards to building business credit? This is dope. I remember I started building business credit with you. I want to say two or three years ago, and this is way different than two or three years ago. <laughs> this is really, really some good stuff. And, and she's one of the people that got her American Express card. <laughs> I be seeing right her. I be, I, I, I be seeing <laughs> Flicky with her Amex at the airport. I'm like, okay, girl, I'm <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, that's the goal. When you're building business credit, you want to build it up good, high enough to where you're able to actually start getting credit cards and different things on your business name, whether it's corporate leases, uh, maybe you want to get a car registered in your business name where you're not having to use your personal credit. Some people, once they build their business credit up, they take their personal credit and pretty much they're not even using it um, at that point because a lot of people don't want to, you know, lose 200 or 100 or 50 points off their personal credit. So now what business owners start to do is, hey, we're just going to put everything in a business name because God forbid everything doesn't work out the business would take a loss on it and eventually it would separate your personal credit where you're actually still able to do things on your personal side without it affecting the business. So most people build their business credit up to actually get everything, whether it's homes, you can get Airbnbs, you can get um, credit cards, you can get per um, not personal loans, business loans. You can do a bunch of different things when it comes to business credit. We always tell people to make sure that you're building correctly um you don't want to be one of those people that have tons of credit cards and you personal guarantor them but then they're all reporting to your personal credit because there are business accounts that do strictly only report to your personal credit but they may tell you hey you can use it for your business but that's not the correct way to do it so just make sure whenever you're building you're asking these questions hey or who are you guys reporting to if it's not done in Brad Street Experian business um Equifax business or what's the other one? Um, credit safe, then they're not reporting to the business credit bureaus. If they're saying like TransUnion or, you know, like Equifax or um like the personal um personal bureaus, you don't want to do business with them because it's not helping you build business credit. It's actually building on your personal. I think that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any more questions, you can ask them here. But if you have any direct questions or you want to um, try to figure some stuff out, you can actually hit um, write me on Instagram if you have Instagram or you can get my number directly from, matter of fact, I can put it here in the chat. Um. So I put my number in the chat. That way, if you guys have any like direct questions that's related to your particular business, whether you need to know something about registering your business or getting the virtual business address or how to get your business registered on 411.com um, or building business credit, whatever you may need in regards to like your business, you can actually shoot me a text or um, connect with me some way whether it's Instagram, however you want to connect with me, and then we can actually talk from there if you guys don't have any more questions. I have one last question, actually. Yes. Would it, if, since I have this company open that soon will not be operating anymore? Yes. Uh, not not the one that I'm going bankrupt, obviously. I have a separate company. Can it, Since it's not going to be operating, is it worth for me to open a new company to work into this Airbnb business that I want to build now? Or can I just um, detach this account from any activities that it's going on now because it's going to last another 15 days only? And then just use the same EIN, the same everything that I have already set up to use towards this new type of business that I want to embrace. Um, so if it's the company that you said that's um, that you're pretty much going bank you said the company no, that no it's that a, it, it's another one that is operating normally but it's just like very small and i have a partnership and we're splitting so she wants anything to do with that because she has another company that she needs to use the name for and i'm going to end up with this company that is just going to be set up and not used for anything so instead of opening a new one can i can i use this one um, you said it's a partnership. It uh, um is both of you and the person's information attached to it, like both of you guys only are on the bank account, only on the bank account because it was a trial for for about two years. It's a very good friend of mine. It was just a trial. So the only thing that she she has connected to 
the company right now is the bank account, which is easy to detach. The same way I put her name, I can take it out because I was the one funding this company alone, like yeah. um, um, creating this company alone. Then she just went for the ride for about a certain period of time. Now she's no longer partner and this company will no longer operate in this industry that I am now. So I was wondering if I could just um, continue using the same EIN that I already have, or should I start everything fresh? No. So if it's not a, if it, if the company doesn't have a name that boxes them in, meaning like, if it's not like a, let's say if you had like a trucking company and you had like, let's say if I had like Yvonne's trucking company, um, being that it has trucking company or like whatever the nature of the business is, if it's attached to the name, I wouldn't use it for Airbnb. No, um, but I can always change the name, right? Yeah, but if you're going to change the name, then you might as well start a whole business, a uh -huh. whole brand new business because the amount of money that you're going to spend to get everything changed over, you might as well have just created a new one. Um, but if it's not a company that has like a particular business attached to it meaning like what is the company's name if you don't mind me asking uh skin pro md it's it's a skincare that's what i do now i have laser spas and i have this small um this small business with the doctor which which we're gonna detach so if the name is related to skin it wouldn't yeah. be very smart to use for airbnb yeah so because then if it if it's something like that i wouldn't use it for airbnb i would use something more general like create a different name yeah. Um, so I wouldn't use it because of the name, but if it was like a different thing, I would have told you just to go ahead and still go for it because you do have the history with the business. Mm -hmm. Um, but because of the name, I wouldn't put that on like an Airbnb platform to say mm -hmm. that's the company that, you know, that you're doing business from. So if I were you and you are getting into the space of Airbnb, I would just go ahead and create everything over from now. Even okay. if you haven't found the Airbnb that you want, just to have all of your stuff established, that way when the time does present itself and the yeah. company tells you, hey, yeah, we can actually offer you a corporate lease or we can allow you to do Airbnb, give us all of your information. You already have everything established. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that that's why I was asking because I want to make sure that everything is ready to go. Yeah. So I would, if I were you and you're going to do Airbnb, I would start a new company now. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. You are. Oh, welcome. and congratulations on the baby. I don't know thank you. how you look so well put together and so like focused. <laughs> I ain't my head a few days. That's why I got this on. <laughs> yeah, you're focused. thank you. Like, come on, nine days. <laughs> Amazing. <Thank you. laughs> Did anybody else have any um questions? No, this was great, Yvonne. Thank you. So again, I left my I number. I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but when starting these trade lines, how much time should we take in between opening one between the next one? Um, there's no time that you need to take in between. I do recommend when you you are opening trade lines, especially whether it's product based or um like the autopilot account i would just strictly recommend to open them on the beginning of the month um because with trade line companies especially like the product based ones they do report to the credit bureaus by the middle of the month so normally i tell my clients hey if you're going to order something from quill order on um let's say august 1st and you want to pay it back within 15 days um this is something i forgot to mention to you guys when a company gives you a net term account, whether it's net 30 or net 14, you always want to pay it back within half of the time. So let's say if they give you a net 30, that means your company has 30 days to pay it back. But because you do want to build a high credit um, business credit score and you actually want to show the credit bureaus that you're somebody worth doing business with, you want to pay it back within half of the time. So if you order on J um, August 1st, you always want to pay back between the 15th to the 16th of the month that way by the 20th when they're sending the credit reports out it shows that you already closed on your balance so i would say there is no time to do it i would just say to keep a mental note in your head i always say do it on the first pay it back by the 15th or the 16th and then you know that you will never miss a payment because that's something that like a practice that you're practicing when it comes to like your business credit okay thank you you're welcome
Okay, so I left my number in the chat. If you guys have any questions, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, you can actually shoot me a text um, in regards to your business. And then we can actually get on the phone, see how we can set some stuff up to get you guys all going. So that way, when it's time for you to open up to get your Airbnb, Airbnb established, you already have everything. So I'm going to pass it back over to Jarrell for him to actually um, close it out. It was good talking to you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're thank welcome. You for your time. All right, all right. That is that was it. I don't know why she passed it back to me, y'all. But um, oh look at Miss Jen, look at the little baby, that baby. Everyone is babies here. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> no, Kennedy's um, she's sleeping. I was trying to, I was gonna wake her up, and we're gonna wake her up because I feel sorry for my wife. She was up all night with the with the babies. Let me stop the recording, but um. <laughs>